Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another tutorial in Madlux FX. In today's tutorial, I'm going to share a few nuggets of knowledge which I absorbed from watching the latest silver paint course from Boris FX, where Katie Morris is teaching us some production level paint techniques. Even though I have many years of paint experience, I found some useful nuggets of knowledge or some tips and tricks every now and then. And uh, yeah, through this video, I'm going to share those few techniques which I learned. If you guys want to check out the entire series, you can go into borisfx.com free training silhouette essential paint also added in the description of the video. You can find the entire training series here. You can click on individual links or you can follow the series from start to end by scrolling down. There are like a variety of topics covered which is super necessary for every artist to learn. I hope it helps. So let's jump into the tutorial. Okay, so we are inside Silhouette right now and uh, this is the footage. I'm gonna drag this into the note tree and this is just to create a new session. Let's rename this as demo for uh, tips and tricks. And also you can do one more thing here, just choose paint as my template and click on OK. So you can see in the node tree we have, you might have already know this if you're using Silhouette regularly. We have Roto and Paint node connected to each other. Now let's see tips and tricks which I was talking about one by one. Okay, so if you are a paint artist, you definitely will use brush settings a lot in your work. I definitely do. Let's suppose if I'm choosing color tool and I'm doing some paint work here in this footage. Let's select this color and I'm gonna draw a stroke here. I don't want this stroke to be this thick. So I'm gonna reduce the thickness or the size. Uh, you can do that manually right over here. You have to control the size or also you can use control and left click on your mouse. This will do the same thing. Also, if you want to control the opacity you can simply drag in the op opacity sliders and also there are a few other settings as well this many days i was not using the shortcut for opacity controls i was doing it manually right now after watching the course i started using this shortcut for controlling the opacity and it's very very helpful so if you hold ctrl and alt in your keyboard and just drag you can see the opacity controls are getting adjusted this is very handy right right now i'm happy with 33 if you see the opacity is very less here Okay, so next one is inside Roto node. I'm animating a shape here. Let's suppose if we had to add a keyframe in between this keyframe and this one. In this case, I'm keeping this 31. I used to go into the viewer and just use my arrow keys to nudge between left and right. That just cancel out the motion, but creates a keyframe. There's a quick way to add keyframes in the timeline. So let's suppose 16 frame, I need to add a keyframe here. Uh, just hold on Alt and click on the specific frame where you have to add the keyframe in the right area in the timeline. There we go the keyframe is added and uh, this is super handy in many situations for example animating opacity animations this shortcut is very very handy Okay, so this quick tip is for artists who use auto paint a lot in your work. I personally use auto paint a lot and by learning this tip, it is really helping me. I hope it helps you too. So inside auto paint, by the way, if any of you don't know what auto paint does and how to use this, I definitely made a tutorial long back. If you guys go ahead and check out that in my YouTube channel, you can find more details about this, how to use this and, and all sort of descriptions. So kindly check it out. Coming back to the point, if you want to specifically auto paint for custom frame range, you can do that by many ways. So let's suppose if I have to paint from frame number 11 to frame number 30. So there is a pop down menu here. If you click on that, you can see there are a few options here. Current work, all frames, customs, current to end and start to current. So in this case, I can simply use start to current because start frame is 11 and current frame is the frame where I want my paint to end. If I click on this, you can see it starts from frame number 11 and it ends at frame number 30. Suppose if I need to start my auto paint from frame number 20 and it should end frame number 40. In this case, if I keep custom, it automatically sets the frames 40 as the last frame. I don't know if this is a bug or not, but definitely helpful. But in this case, if I have to paint from frame number 20 till frame number 44, before I used to come here and type in the exact frame numbers, there's a cool technique to make the work even more efficient. There's a small playback kind of icon here. You can simply
simply click on that and it just fills out the exact frame where we are right now and also if you go into 20th frame and if you click on this icon by the way i always forget that always make sure to fill in the first frame and then fills in the last frame or else this is going to happen i will start the auto paint from frame number 20 and uh, let's go into frame number 45 and click on this one now if i do auto paint or now i use auto paint for any paint it simply does the job only for this work range that means frame number 22 frame number 45 these icons definitely saves us some time okay so for the next tip this is definitely helpful for roto artists especially if you do lots of tracking inside silhouette this track definitely is helpful for you but one thing I'm not sure is maybe this footage is not that apt for doing demo of this technique. I'm just lazy to import a new footage. Apologies for that. So just go into the roto node and let's suppose if I have to take track for this BG mountain. In this case, maybe I need to do a rough roto for this lady as well as this grass. I'm going to do that. Let's do a garbage roto for this lady. This is enough. Let's draw a roto for the mountain. Make sure mountain shape is in a different layer. Now let's rename this as FG Lady. Let's rename this as BG Mountain. So make sure the FG Lady layer is on the top. As usual, just do the tracking. Wait, before that, let me change the blend mode for FG Lady layer. Click on that. Click here. That's it. Subtract. If you see the mat, Let's go into this frame. You can see the area where we did the garbage roto is getting subtracted from the mountain layer, which is super handy if we are doing tracking. Obviously, next step is to do the tracking. For that, I'm just selecting both these layers and make sure you are inside Mocha Tracker. I'm just using translation here and let's do the tracking. Cool. So let me show you the track layer. So in this case, even though if we the FG layer was perfectly animated before, now you can see it is not matching or it is going somewhere else. That is because the FG lady layer also got automatically tracked along with the BG mountain layer, which we don't need. So there is a new option. Maybe it's old. I just noticed very recently from the from the tutorial series. So I'm just sharing it. Let me do Control Z. If you go inside the tracker properties again, you can see there is an option here. You can uncheck track subtracted layers we already animated the shape for the fg lady or whatever occlusion shapes you did in this case i don't want this layer to be again tracked that just messes up my roto so i don't want that to happen so just make sure you uncheck this option and now if you select both layers and do the tracking again now you can see it matches perfectly it is working properly right this is one of the options which i noticed very recently hopefully this is going to help you as well Okay, so next tip is going to be a lifesaver for who do lots of manual painting. For example, frame by frame painting or rope removals. Those sort of work if you're doing a lot, definitely learn this technique to ease your workflow. So I've selected my paint node and inside the properties, uh, let's suppose if I have to use three different colors every now and then uh, in different frames, I can simply select the same color again and again. Let me show you. If you go into the color properties, if I have to select this color with all these values, I'm going to use that here very roughly. And maybe I have to paint a different color in the background. Let's suppose this is the color. And this is not a perfect example, but I hope it makes sense to you. If you go into the next frame and do the same thing, the good thing is that I have already selected the same color from the inside area that is this pink. So I can definitely use that. But how to select the other color? Draw similar strokes inside this frame. It's going to be a bit tricky. One thing you can do is go into this frame and select this color. You can right click and select this color and do the same thing. Definitely it's a lot of work, right? That's a waste of a lot of time. I'm going to show you one cool technique to call back the same color every now and then or whenever you wish by saving that specific settings uh, i'm sure this technique is there from very long but i don't know for some reason i was not using that a lot in my work after watching this training series i got hooked into that technique and let me show you a new example here if i want to select a different color here like uh, maybe this color and uh, let's keep the size as 10 and the opacity as 100 maybe and uh, i'm gonna draw here right 
The additional thing which I'm going to do here is just saving all the settings. How to do that? Just click on this plus icon and you can see now we have a list here. This is the first preset in the list and I'm going to rename this as maybe yellow and uh, make sure all the settings are saved. You don't have to click on save button, automatically get saved. I am going to click on this plus icon again. Now let's select a different color. Let's suppose this is the color which I want, green color and let's rename this as green and maybe i will uh, keep the opacity as 15 here now let's draw a line here and i want to create one more color here so let's click on the plus icon again maybe blue dark blue this works uh size 100 this time and the opacity is maybe 25 or 20 that works and uh, yeah it looks cool let's rename this as blue everything is set here now if i draw the stroke you can see uh, the opacity is very less that's why it is looking like this if you want a different color you can do ctrl z and let's select the proper blue color now we have the blue color this is perfect it works now let's go into the next frame and i want the same color you don't have to select the same color again and again that's a good thing here just click on this yellow preset here the yellow color got selected and we have the same opacity settings as well as the size settings we can also alter the other settings as well but i just adjusted only these and i'm going to draw the same thing now if you want to select the green preset you can use a shortcut for that alt one two three and it goes on so in my case it's the second preset in the list and i can use alt 2 the green color brush got activated and i can simply draw the same stroke and if you want to call back the blue color brush again click on alt 3 in the keyboard it just got selected you can draw the same kind of brush strokes which you did in the previous frame no it's not specific to color brush this is a global setting that means you can save presets for any of the tools from this list wait a minute i'm gonna show you how to use the same settings inside clone tool so let's select clone tool I'm going to delete all these presets. So let's go into a different frame. In this case, I'm going to use clone from different frames and uh, with different settings as well. You might have already used clone tool before in your work. If you guys are new to these properties, definitely watch out my old tutorials. It is going to help you for sure. We can select the clone source as output in this and this is 40th frame which we are painting. Keep this as 39, maybe 50 and I'm going to delete this. Oops. created a new preset here and let's rename this as clone frame 40 okay so it got changed when i when i was shuffling between the color tool and the clone tool so let's keep this as frame number 40 and uh, the rest of the things very much same as you see here let's create a new preset rename this as clone 39 that means you have to keep the frame number as 39 here and let's keep this as input let's keep the opacity as 50 maybe 55 everything looks okay so we have two presets saved right now and we can do one more in the next preset i'm not going to use input and out as my clone source instead i'm going to use a different footage as my clone source for that i can simply go into yeah i was already testing it so let's drag this checkerboard into the viewer and connect the source one pipe into the checkerboard go back into the paint node and if you go and see here source one you can see the same checkerboard and let's suppose this is the footage which i'm going to use as my clone source so let's go into the paint properties go back to output in this case uh, let's rename this as clone check let's select source one as my clone source let's keep 41 as the frame number 100 as my size of the brush and also opacity is 100 so this looks perfect i have three presets right now let's juggle between these presets and see if it actually worked click on alt 1 frame number which we use was 40 and the source is output everything looks cool to me alt 2 second preset clone 39 and you can see oh there is a mismatch here so let's keep this as 39 let's keep this as input now it should be saved and the settings let's keep this as 50 and uh, maybe this as 50 as well if you go into the third preset alt 3 you can see it's source 1 that means the checkerboard which we connected and also the frame number is 41 settings looks good so this is working perfect use alt 1 2 3 to shuffle between these presets and the good thing is that you can go into any other frame use the same settings and yeah this is definitely a lifesaver we have seen few tips and tricks inside the software now i'm just going to show you a workflow technique that means i'm just gonna delete everything here and maybe output i'm gonna delete here because i'm not going to render anything here now let's take a new node extract detail 
straight ahead you can see our footage is changed right now this is just a color layer that means if you go and check here we have two layers color and detail layer if you see detail layer we have all the details so this is basically the frequency separation thing and if you go into the color layer we have all the color data so how i'm going to use this as a workflow so let's take a paint node and let's connect that into the extract detail so if you hover your mouse here you can see this pipe is specifically for the color layer and this pipe is specifically for the detail layer so i'm going to copy and paste this same paint node here and connect that into the detail layer now if you go into paint node for the color layer you can do any kind of paint work specifically for that color layer it won't affect the details again this is very much similar to the frequency separation technique uh, you guys do inside nuke and if you go into the other paint node that is paint 2 you can see this is just the detail layer so how to combine this i'm going to use a grain composite here I'm just going to show you the exact workflow which I saw in the training series. You can definitely explore further and uh, enhance this workflow. I'm going to connect the grain composite into the paint nodes, one into the paint one and the other one into the paint two. As you can see, now we have the same plate or the same footage. Now let's suppose I have to go, maybe I will just decrease the, sorry. Now let's suppose I have to remove some things over here. Let's do some dragging here. It's very grainy, so not the exact result which we are looking for, but it works in this case. If you go back to the grain composite, let me make this default. We already did some paint here. Now let's check the difference. So this is a plate and uh, if you see the output, you can see all those details are gone right now. This is purely because we have separated the color layer and the detail layer into two separate streams and, and painted and then combined it together later. So if you want to do some precise painting, definitely use this technique. So I hope you learned few techniques through this tutorial. And if you did, give a thumbs up to the video and share this with your friends who are trying to learn Silhouette. I will add the link to the entire training series in the description of the video. I hope this is going to be helpful for you. I'm sure you are going to learn a lot from there. Till next tutorial, it's Manu signing off. Thank you for watching.